This is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will. It's a choice. It's intentional. It is on purpose. I will rejoice. That's my response to the day that the Lord hath made, and I will be glad in it. Glad not just by wearing a smile, that I should do. Glad not just by clapping my hands, that I should do as a praise unto God. But I'll be glad in it, meaning it will be my privilege to walk out today according to God's desire for my life. I will make God glad by being happy about the fact that I'm privileged to serve God because he's worthy of all of our praise. I'm Bishop Marcus A. Johnson Sr. and I'm your host today on the New Harvest Midday Inspirational Mealtime. And it is my express privilege and honor to share with you these nuggets from the Lord. Let's pray now and ask God's blessings on this meal. We are just being just being poured upon with all of these blessings of God in these teachings that we are blessed to receive. Pastor Leon taught on the Bible class midweek, and here we are again, and we're just going to keep pouring it in and pouring it in because that's God's will. That's God's design. Elder Foster teaches in an adult biblical academy on Sundays, and Lady Rone and, and Kyle, they are teaching with the youth on Sunday, on the Biblical Academy, and the women with Elder Elston, they're doing their prayer on Tuesdays, and then we have uh, Brother Adrian Waters, who's doing his ministering with the men on Thursday night. Why are we doing all this? Because God has made all things available to us through his word, through prayer, through fellowship, and we're taking full advantage of it. All right, that's enough of marketing. Now let's get into our prayer. Father, we thank you so much for what you have done and are doing. We are grateful that we are recipients of all of this goodness. Now bless us this noonday as we impart the word, as we part the word, as we open it up and receive it. May it bring us the strength and the guidance that we need in Jesus' name. Amen. The series, The Gifts of the Spirit. And I'm entitling the lesson today, Gifts of the Spirit in Action. Gifts of the Spirit in Action. I thought it would be interesting that we've talked about the various gifts of the Spirit, and that's the spiritual gifts as well as the people gifts. But let's look at them biblically in action, in action. Acts 2, verse 38 through 43, and it reads, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward or crooked generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. All right, let's, let's dig into this. This is good stuff. Highlight number one. Highlight number one. Now, we're going to look at these spiritual gifts. We're going to look at the people gifts, and we're going to see what the Lord is saying to us in this lesson. Highlight number one. On the day of Pentecost, the gifts of the apostleship, evangelists, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, and exhortation are all in action. My God. Apostleship, evangelists, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, and exhortation are 
all in action. Let's look at several scriptures that will make this real clear for us. Acts 2 and 4, tongues or xenolalia, that's speaking a language you have not learned that is a native language to the listeners. Listen, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, other native tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance, as the Spirit gave them the speech that they had not learned, the language they had not learned. That's tongues. Then look at Acts 2, verse 14 through 18. Let's look at the apostleship, prophecy, and miracles. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, Peter as an apostle, and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Well, we could also put in there, he's going to prophesy, but he's also going to exhort, he's going to evangelize. He's going to do some teaching too. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out into those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. All this is happening on Pentecost. Look at Acts 2, verse 21 through 40. While we're doing this, I want you to see the gifts at work. I want you to see the gifts literally in action so that we can understand that there is a practical application to this spiritual phenomena, spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts and people gifts. Let's look now at the evangelists, the exhorting and prophecy. Let's look at this. And by the way, this is not exhaustive. There are other gifts that are also on display. I'm only pulling a few out just so that you have an example of practical application. Acts 2 verse 21 through verse 40. It's quite lengthy, but follow me now. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, Paul the Apostle is now evangelizing. He's also prophesying. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. He's doing some teaching now. Paul is also introducing some teaching here. All right, let's, let's keep on going because we're going to just see gifts that are just flowing in and out of this. Him, meaning Jesus, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. He's teaching them something. He's telling them your cruel actions literally were used by God to perform his great work of mercy and grace. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Now, th those in the audience, they knew of who David was. They understood the scriptures as it concerns David. But now Peter is doing some teaching of what they thought they knew. To help put it in perspective. Therefore did my heart rejoice. And my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. This is what David said. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Well they didn't understand what David was speaking. Concerned himself in his day. But it was prophetically speaking of Jesus in his day. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Jesus was not left to be to, to, to decay in the, in the ground. No, no. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. 
thou shalt make me full of joy with countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Some more teaching here. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne, that Jesus would sit on the throne of David. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Oh, Peter's preaching now. He's teaching and preaching. Listen to this. Oh, this is, this is good stuff. Neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know it shortly. This is prophecy. This is teaching. This is preaching. Lord, have mercy. That God hath made the same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. My goodness. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart because the teaching, the preaching, the prophesying, it, it, it impacted them. The evangelism, it impacted them. It, 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 it opened up their understanding. It pricked their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? This was their response to Peter's speaking. Peter using his speaking gifts. Lord, have mercy. They asked, what shall we do? We want to respond to this truth. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He's prophesying to them. He's evangelizing. He's giving them good news. He has taught them to bring them to a level of understanding. He's teaching them so that they would understand the practical application of these truths but he's using the tools of the gifts of the Spirit. He's using the tool as a people gift to reach them so they could understand. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort. So he gave them good news, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Insight number one. Lord, we covered some ground with that. Insight number one. Whereas various gifts of speaking, prophecy, exhorting, and people gifts are on display on Pentecost. They are all working together to the glory of God. Now that's what you got to understand. That there's a working together with these gifts that make them effectual that make them effective, that make them positively impacting. Acts 2, 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. The apostles are people gifts. And many signs and wonders were done by them. Tip number one. Let's appreciate that 120 souls from the upper room in unity were utilizing their spiritual gifts without any clashing or disruption, allowing the Holy Spirit to work. This means nobody was caught up in title. Nobody was trying to get center stage for themselves. Nobody was trying to get recognition. Nobody was doing any of that. What we see now is the work of the Spirit of God through his vessel now operating and we see the fruit of it, the benefit of it, the outcome. Acts 2.46 And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house 
did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. These people became one as they became born again and a part of the body of Christ, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. This is the potential. This is the intended outcome of spiritual gifts at work when there's unity. Highlight number two. Highlight number two. After Pentecost, the gifts of the apostleship, healings, and miracles were still in action. Were still in action. This wasn't just a thing that happened on the day of Pentecost. Oh no, Pentecost happened. And now we see the gifts of the Spirit still operating. Acts 5, verse 12 through 16. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders or miracles wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them. So those that wouldn't get with the program, they didn't try to interfere with this. But the people magnified them. They magnified the apostles. They acknowledged what they were doing. And they acknowledged it. And they lifted up the work of God. And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women. Good Lord. <laughs> In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter the apostle passing by might overshadow some of them, that they would be blessed by Peter's shadow because he was operating by the gifts of the Spirit under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. My God, the spiritual gifts are tools that are used to accomplish an assignment to fulfill the function that God has given for one to do, and the people gifts are given to edify, build up the body, to be more like Jesus. So the work of Jesus can be done in the earth through Christ's church. That's why these gifts can't be used as sporting, sporting tools for promoting individuals, for, for, for making individuals gods and goddesses. That was never God's intention. For us to label ourselves and then to make an audience for ourselves that we may bring glory unto ourselves. That's the work of the enemy. But if these gifts are used the way they were intended, then souls will be delivered and saved and the glory will go to God. Insight number two. Somebody say the spiritual gifts should bring glory to God. Live chat that. The spiritual gifts should be glory to God. Not to men, but to God. Should bring glory to his name should bring glory unto the Lord. Insight number two, whereas various gifts of healings, miracles, and people gifts of the apostleship and evangelists are on display after Pentecost that are working together to the glory of God. Good Lord, I just, I just praise God for this truth. Acts 4 Verse 29 and 30. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. This is the result now of the apostles having ministered to this young girl that was demon-possessed. And because she was delivered, those that were making merchandise of her were angry. And they wanted to see these apostles arrested because they were damaging their demonic uh, merchandise. They were making money off of this girl's bondage. And now these apostles prayed, prayed to God because they were determined to serve him. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, threatenings to us for using these gifts to your glory. 
and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Let us continue to prophesy. Let us continue to preach. Let us continue to evangelize. Let us continue to share forth the good news, to exhort and edify the good news of Christ by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Would you look at this? Holy Ghost brings boldness, y'all. Tip number two. Let's appreciate that the apostles with boldness ministered the word of God and signs and wonders that drew souls to Christ and his church. Acts 4.31 And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. and They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. You get it? Because we got to use these tools. We've got to use the people gifts. The people gifts have got to go forth because there's a work of God to be done in the earth. Highlight number three. Paul and Silas, as people gifts, display the apostleship, evangelists, oh my God, and teachers. Do you see this? after receiving a great miracle and extending mercy. We're looking at these tools that work, y'all. Acts 16, verse 26 through 30. Follow me. Now, Paul and Silas were locked up in jail for ministering. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. My God, we're looking at miracles. We're looking at miracles. And all the doors were open and everyone's bands was loose. That's a miracle. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm. For we are all here. Listen to the apostle declare. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. This is the keeper of the gate. He was about to commit suicide thinking he would be killed if these prisoners got away. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Lord have mercy. Do you see these gifts at work? Huh? Do you see it? Do you see it at work? Insight number three. Whereas various gifts of miracles, mercy, and people gifts of the apostleship, evangelist, and teacher are on display after Pentecost, the jailer and his entire household are saved. Glory be to God. Look at Acts 16, verse 31 through 34. And they said, listen to them exhort. Listen to them uh, evangelize. I, 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 want, I, want, I, want, I want you to I want you to follow what's taking place. I want you to be real clear that the spiritual gifts, the, the people gifts are at work. They're at work. And I want you to see real clear that mercy is being extended. Now remember, Paul and Silas had been jailed. They could have been come, they could have become indignant. They could have become angry. No, they extended mercy. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. They're evangelizing. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. They started sharing the good news to everyone under the sound of their voice. And the prisoner took them the same hour of the night because they had beaten them and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his, straightway, his entire house. They got saved. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them. Now he's extending mercy and rejoice, believing in God with all his house. Now as a prison guard, he didn't have to do that 
But when God gets a hold of you, we used to sing the song, there's been a great change in me, a great change in me. I am so happy. I am so free. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's been a great change. And so this prison guard is now exhibiting this change. Tip number three, let's appreciate that the Holy Spirit distributed the spiritual gifts and Jesus gave the people gifts. Why? To accomplish the work of evangelism, deliverance, and soul winning. 1 Corinthians 12 and 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all, to profit according to the divine agenda. Ephesians 4.11, and he, Jesus, gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Here is our final takeaway. I pray this is blessing you. I pray that you're literally seeing the gifts in action. You're seeing what it looks like when men and women of God submit themselves unto God and become available vessels to God, allow the Holy Spirit to completely transport us into the body of Christ that's being born again and fill us with his spirit, control us and give us spiritual gifts that we can use as tools and the people gifts that they edify the body of Christ, that souls, the very the very apple of God's eye, are brought unto salvation. Final takeaway. Here's a question. What makes the many spiritual gifts and people gifts work together to accomplish the plan of God? Because sometimes it's hard to get people to work together. Lord have mercy in, on a job, in school, in a community, even in a household, in a church. Sometimes it's hard to get people to work together. Well, here's the answer to this question. What makes the many spiritual gifts and people gifts work together to accomplish the plan of God? Love. There it is. There it is. Love. The essential virtue within the fruit of the Spirit subdues the works of the flesh to enable the work of the Holy Spirit through the gifts to operate and minister unhindered. What makes the people gifts and the spiritual gifts work together? Without any complication of the flesh, love. Somebody live chat. Love conquers them all. Come on. Love. The love of God. It conquers the works of the flesh. And it lets the spiritual gifts and the people gifts work together. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. Paul said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, have the word of knowledge and have all faith so that I could move, remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, that's, that's the gift of giving. And though I give my body to be burned, that's sacrificial giving, and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. And then look at 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Follow after love or charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy, that you may tell forth and foretell the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here is a final insight. The fruit of the Spirit must work in concert with the gifts of the Spirit to tame the flesh and unleash the new creature for Christ's sake. The fruit of the Spirit must work in concert with the gifts of the Spirit to tame the flesh and unleash the new creature in Christ for Christ's sake. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that the fruit of the Spirit being led by love, will bring us into a working relationship of unity. And it will cause the spirit man to stand tall for Christ while the flesh is subdued, buffeted, and brought into subjection. Bless this lesson to open up our eyes and our understanding. And we give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. What a midday meal. 
now. Hit that like button, please. And live chat any comment that will show that this has blessed you. And then the Elsons will be on tomorrow to review the week's lesson that has been a blessing to me. And I trust has been a blessing to you. Please, please, the Lord lay upon your heart. We keep asking for spiritual, for, for, for your giving. It will help us to continue on the work of ministry. And we're trusting that Tanzania is going to keep growing. New Harvest Fellowship Church, Tanzania, and our church in Iowa, Old Elevation Church, our church in Randallstown Church Without Walls. Oh, we just believe in God to do the work. And God bless you, and we'll see you on Saturday. We'll see you Sunday. God bless you in Jesus' name.